There we go. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome aboard. Kathy, I'll turn it over to you here in a minute. Um, thanks for getting on every Tuesday. Uh, we're here. Accelerator Mastermind Freedom Team open to everybody. If you're a guest with us from uh, any other company outside of EXP, it's great to have you with us. You're always welcome. Every week we do this. Um, the recordings of this are all available. Every recording we've ever done, I think, pretty much is available on our Freedom Team support page, Freedom, freedomteamsupport.com. And also in Workplace, if you're part of VXP, you got a Workplace group, Freedom Team, and they're all in there as well. So lots of good stuff we've been having lately. Um, the shift in the market. I've been doing this 21 years, and it seems like every week I'm like, wow, there's an idea. There's an idea. There's something I never thought of, you know, all this stuff. So it's been really, really good. So anyway, great to have you with us. Um, Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce Gerard, and we okay. will get started. It's going to be good stuff today. Looking yeah, to we're it. excited. I'm glad to have everybody here today. and. Yeah, I'm not going to do much talk and I am going to turn it over to Gerard. But, you know, what I'll say is that um, we some of us had a mastermind um, in Gatlinburg and Gerard was on one of the panels and um, there was there was a lot of interest on the topics that he was talking about, about business brokerages and commercial real estate. And, you know, like many of you guys, I'm I'm a residential realtor and have done pretty much virtually in 24 years, no commercial stuff. Because what I know is I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and I know the commercial space, dealing with business brokerages is a whole different ball game. And like I said, most of the agents that were, that were in our Gatlinburg Mastermind, they were also residential agents. But we had such great interaction and so much interest um, in conversation around what Gerard had sh was sharing um, at our mastermind. I thought we need to bring him on our Tuesday training and let him share with you as a, as an agent, you know, what they do, how we can partner together with them, what they're doing. You know, they're creating a website and he'll talk a little bit about it at the end um, that I think is going to be awesome and exciting for all of us. And so um, I'm excited for you guys to learn from, from Gerard, um, as I'm excited to hear more information myself. So Gerard, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, why don't you start, Gerard? I should have um, I should have had your bio right in front of me, but I know you're a big baller. You've been in real estate for a long time, for, you know, what, 20 plus years and just sold hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate. But uh, why don't you give, you know, just an over... Um, um, just a highlight of yourself, and then I'm going to let you take it over. Well, I appreciate it, Kathy, Jeff, Kim. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of the Freedom Team. Um, I'm also excited to be part of the team. So this yeah. is a great opportunity to, to speak with everybody. And yes, I'll be speaking on business brokerage, what the heck that is. Uh, first, a little bit on my background. I've got a lot of paper on the wall. So I have a master's degree in business from Jacksonville University. I graduated law school in 1999 from a uh, university in South Florida. When I was getting out of law school, I had a friend that was in the mortgage business and he was killing it. He was making over six digits. Um, and he's laughing at me because I'm getting all these job offers, 30, 40,000 a year, starting as a lawyer. So I decided not to go that route, did not take the bar and jumped into the mortgage business, spent $150 on a mortgage license after spending 60,000 in law school. So I did that. <laughs> Uh, I sold 125 loan to values. Think about that. LTVs, 125. I sold three year arms that were big balloons at the end. I sold stated income and I was very good. I probably was just a little bit part of that whole 2008 crash. I did my part to help that happen uh, when I was in the mortgage business. Then I got the real estate. you've repented over that, but <laughs> move on. Well, that, was a, that, was a, that was a short, short stint that I jumped into the real estate business. I uh, got my Real estate license in 2001, moved back to Destin, Florida, which is my hometown where I was born and raised, and uh, started selling condos. I wasn't really good at selling condos. Uh, I didn't really have the patience for it. And some of you that are on this call know me personally. So I also saw a, you know, newspapers back then, you actually read them with drinking coffee. And there was a little bit of an article talking about selling businesses at a holiday inn on a Saturday morning. You know, come listen to how you can sell a business. And um, I went to the seminar um, and then they start saying the only thing you need to sell a business is a real estate license. I'm like, what? And um, I listened to the seminar, started talking to the guy that was um, actually doing it, who had been in the business a while. And, and that day changed my life. Um, I started focusing on businesses 
I was really, I was a lot better at talking to business owners than talking to people trying to buy a condo. I'll tell you that. So within a year or two, got about 30 listings, sold my first uh, business, which was a landscaping company, $200,000, made $20,000 on it, split it with my partner. And we never looked back. Uh, it was game on. I'm like, this is easy. This is what I want to do. Because that's about financials. It's not about the emotion stuff. It's like, do the financials work or do they do not work for the buyer? So, you know, so we did that. And I have sold about 490, 470, 480 million dollars in my career, which is a lot. I'm a certified business intermediary through the IBBA, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. I'm also a certified business appraiser. That means SBA will take a guy like me. If someone's looking at using an SBA loan to purchase a business in the real property, they'll get me to actually analyze that. There's only a few hundred of us in the nation that actually do it. So, so that's kind of like the business side of it. Um, um, you know, within three years of that time, I ended up owning a business brokerage, a mortgage company, a real estate uh, title company, and then of course the market turned. And then real quickly, before we jump into the presentation, I want to explain how I got to EXP. So I, in 2021, EXP was just starting, the EXP commercial was just announcing they're gonna do a business brokerage division. Okay, I'm like, that's interesting. So someone said, you need to go talk to them because I have a business valuation software. <laughs> but during pandemic, when, all the, when everyone's shutting down the listings and no one's really selling anything, I developed a software. It actually integrates uh, with Intuit QuickBooks. So if you went onto the Intuit QuickBooks app store, you typed in business valuation, you'll pull up today's Val, which is my software company, uh, which integrates with QuickBooks. If you, if you actually use QuickBooks, 74% uh, of all business owners actually do use QuickBooks, but you don't have to be a QuickBooks user to actually use it. So that kind of jumpstart, and that's what this conversation I was having with uh, Stephanie Gillizan at the time. So I was supposed to be talking to her about the software. And of course, after four minutes, she just turned it into, you know, she knows how much I sold. She knows I got a whole team. I'm one of the largest independent business brokerage. And she's like, you know, you're on a pretty good 50 foot wave, Gerard. Would you like to jump on a tsunami with us and, and come join EXP? And after going to Dallas and doing a couple of things, I ended up putting my license with EXP commercial. Uh, looking at the business brokerage, and then eventually brought my entire team at the beginning of this year. And let me tell you, it was the best thing we ever did. So, so we are developing an, a, for EXP Commercial, the business brokerage division. I'm going to get in the difference here between commercial and business brokerage. Uh, just this year, EXP Corporate announced the creation of a business brokerage committee, which is amazing. That's saying corporate's paying attention to that, right? Uh, they're going to they, they basically uh, started a committee. I'm the co-vice chair of it. So we'll be establishing some principles, some guidelines for EXP realty agents, commercial agents to work within our ecosystem and, and even non-EXP agents so that when we're, we're out there with our clients, we're actually taking care of them and make sure we're doing uh, what we need to do for the client to get their business sold. So I'm going to go ahead and do a share screen and jump into this presentation with you guys. So here. This is, so Gillis and Global and the Shark Team, we've partnered together uh, to create what's called Agent Payday. And this is what I'll be discussing in this presentation. You got the Gillis and Team, which has done hundreds of millions of dollars. You got the Shark Team. So we're making sure we can take care of clients in whatever industry, across wherever they are in the entire US, we can help an agent's client uh, get, get, their, get that deal done. So, of course, you guys know Stephanie and Sam, and this is some of my team, Kelly, Angel, Orth, Maria, and Mike, who's, I believe, on the, on the call here, too. So here, what is a business broker? I'm curious later to find out how many of you actually know or have ever heard of what a business broker is. And simply put, we're just helping you know, clients. We assist in buying and selling businesses. That's the true definition. But there's a lot more to business brokering than just that. So here's some of the items, some of the things that we do to help assist the client, whether they're a buyer or seller. But the biggest piece is the valuation piece. So some of the things that we bring to the table, we need to make sure that we value that business 
correctly to make sure we take it to market so we can sell it for the client for the highest price in the market. Now, there's a 20% success rate. Think about that number. Only 20% success rate for a business broker consultant or business owner to start marketing their business for sale and actually get it sold. Why is it so low? Number one, the business owner has bad financials. Or number two, they've overinflated the price. A lot of you out there have probably seen that when you, if, if you put a listing up in the MLS and it doesn't get any uh, traction for three or four days, it's overpriced, right? Same thing with the business. A lot of times a business owner will think his business is worth a lot more than it is because it's their, their baby. They've been working it 10, 20, 30 years. And they've tried, they convinced the broker, the consultant, to put the price out, whatever they think it is, instead of what the actual value is or what the market can bear. And we don't do that. So, so that's, that's where we come in. That's the beginning of the process of what we do. What is the difference between commercial real estate and business brokering? So think of this building as the physical location. So a commercial agent will typically help a buyer, help a client buy or lease the building, right? We're actually helping the client, the people in there running the boutique, the boutique, the name, Lynette's Boutique, that's the business there. So a lot of people get com commercial confused with business brokering. Now, as business brokers, we also handle the leasing and the purchasing and selling of the, of the property as well. But that's the two differences. So if you know any commercial agents that are CCIMs, that's a commercial certified investment member, we have the same credential in business, but it's called a CBI, Certified Business Intermediary, which I already said that's, I am one of them. There's only 500 of us in the entire US. And I, and I would like to say that uh, one of my team members, Angel Orth, uh, just won the scholarship for IBBA, a woman scholarship, Empower Scholarship, that will pay for her credentialing of the CBI. I gotta throw that out there for Angel. So these are some of the businesses we've solved. So, Think in terms of your clients, your family, your friends around you. They own restaurants, gas stations, daycares, pet grooming, bakery franchises, pubs. Think about any kind of business you can, hair salons. Um, these are the types, anything that cash flows, uh, our team can sell. And I'm sure you've got a lot of thoughts going on right now about that. Between Gillis and Global and Shark Team, We've closed over a billion dollars in business sales. But more importantly to all of you out there, we paid out almost 100,000 to our realtor partners in the last 90 days. And I'm gonna show you a couple of these checks. So what if we showed you how to generate leads from your past and future clients to make more money? But as partners, we do all the work. And that's kind of our motto for three years. It's like, listen, you, you send us your clients, we do all the work and you get paid. And a lot of agents like that. So here's some of the checks we paid out to realty agents. And Gretchen Carlson is an EXP realty agent in Orlando. So we paid out a $9,600 check for a hire store that she sent us. Uh, here, uh, Katie and Dave, David, we paid them out $19,375 for a dog grooming business that they referred out to us. And this is actually a non-EXP agent uh, that's about 100 miles from where we actually from Destin. For a sports bar, we just paid her out $43,560. $43, and she did absolutely no work on it. She just sent us the referral. We signed a referral agreement and she got paid at closing. Okay. So of course, we want to show this. Eventually, we'd like to partner with all of you out there so we can send you guys some checks. So with our agent payday program, and that's what it's called, agent payday, we're going to provide you all the scripts. So these scripts, you, you'll be able to send out. You'll be able to go to the website. You'll be able to put your own branding on them. You'll be able to say you're partnering with us and put it out to your past and former current clients and future clients. And also, you know, your family and friends. Everyone in this audience knows a business owner. I bet you the majority of everyone in this audience know someone that bought or sold a business in the last few years. And I'm curious if anyone in this audience outside of some of my team have ever got paid on it. That's what we're trying to teach you to do. Everybody, there's so many people out there looking to sell their businesses right now. And as a partner in EXP, we sell businesses in all 50 states. That's what's amazing. So we literally 
just, I don't care what state it is. We right now, our team has listings in nine states. And I know the Gillison team has listings in 36 states. So that's, that's the commitment. That's what we bring uh, to the table in a partnership. So here, this is probably what you're all really interested in. How do you get paid? Now I want you, to, we're gonna stay on this page for just a little bit. So typically when you refer a real estate listing client to another agent, you receive 25% of two to 3% of the listing side, right? So if we're looking at a million dollar residential listing, you're going to receive a referral fee between $5,000 and $7,500. As our partner, we pay out 20% for business listing on the listing side above $500,000. Therefore, on that same million dollar business listing, you receive an agent payday of $10,000. Now, there's a lot of work that we do um, on our side. Um, business listings under $5 million are typically 10%. So you look at on the listing side is 5%, on the selling buy-in side, there's 5%. And then we have a whole team working the listing. So between doing the valuation, putting together the marketing pack, we call it a confidential business review, which could take a couple of weeks, working with the seller, preparing his business to sell. There's a lot of those, those, those things that take a lot of time and energy, and we make sure that we get paid for it. And, 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 and think about this. We do this. We, we market every single one of our listings without advertising the business name, without advertising the business location, without advertising anything but, mo but the financial cash flow of the business and some generic information like dog grooming. We might have some generic um, pictures of some dogs or some real pictures of the dogs being groomed somewhere. So I, I can give you a story that I sold we listed and sold an ice cream store, ice cream shop. It was $5.5 million a couple of years ago, 3.2 million for the real property, 2.3 million for the business. It was doing really well. Um, and it was in Florida. It was a specialty shop. And I, we listed it, we marketed it, uh, ice cream store, two and a half blocks from the beach in Florida. Now think about that. Think about how many ice cream shops are within two or three blocks in the state of Florida. And think about how many calls that I had to take in order to get to the right qualified buyer. We took probably 250 to 300 calls on that. So here's some of the current business listings uh, that we have currently. So we've got an 1.85 million listing at 10%. So the agent that referred us, when we close that deal, will receive 18.5. We just did a, a month ago a $9.2 million listing at 8%. That agent will get paid $73,600. Then we just did a $22,500,000 listing at 6.5%. And that look at that, that payday. This is why we're calling it agent payday. These are not referral fees. These literally are paydays because they're going to receive $146,000 and did absolutely nothing but referred the business to us. This morning, uh, Kelly, who's on the call, we just got a listing for 2.15 million at 10%. So that, that agent will receive $21,500. You know, these things happen all the time. All these deals are out there. All of you know somebody without knowing them right now, there's somebody out there in your sphere of influence that is thinking about it, contemplating selling their business. You just don't know it because there's no discussion yet, but we're going to teach you how to go out. And, and get those um, and get those leads. So really, uh, it's so easy. Uh, we're going to make this easy for you guys. Lay lay the scripts out in front of you. Uh, allow you put your own branding on that. You say you're partnering with us. You put it out. We're going to give you uh, beyond just the one email drip campaign for those of you using the CRM. We're going to make sure this is so simple and so easy. And then you're going to come to our website. It's gonna be agentpayday.com. And we're going live next Monday, February 20th, 2023. And we're really excited about that. And I'm gonna stop share right here. But these are this is what business brokering is versus commercial. And this is probably like a pretty quick presentation because I'm gonna pretty much open the, the panel up to start talking right now because I wanna answer your questions and make sure 
I didn't want to overload you guys with, with this stuff, but any questions that you have, we're going to get that out right now and we'll have a discussion if that's okay. I know there's got to be questions. Who has questions? Let's open it up. I don't have a question. I just wanted to open up a topic possibly. Um, I was interested in this years ago from specifically the golf course and golf club side. Yes. I worked for a uh, management company that acquired clubs or acquired management uh, functionality of clubs and things like that. And I just, if, if you have any experience in that world, I'd love to hear what you just have to say about golf clubs in particular. And that's, that's, a, that's a whole different, that's another level. So we, I have a partnership with a gentleman, another broker that he only specializes in golf courses and he does them all over the world. He's doing He's doing one in Panama right now, um, but that that is more into the commercial side of it. And a lot of times you're getting into residential development. Uh, uh, it, it's a whole nother animal, but uh, I can discuss that with you off off this uh, off this call and we can get more into the details of it. Thank you. Cool. Ryan, Ryan. You got a question. I do. Thanks, Kathy. I just. I was curious, is there anything, uh, Gerald, that you like that your group stays away from that doesn't, you know, that you don't want to really tackle, you know, from from the, you know, business, you know, selling side? That That's a great question, Brian. Um, so, so here, you notice I said 20% above 500,000. So th there's a lot of business brokerage teams and business brokers that are in a niche, okay? So... So, you know, whatever that niche is, a lot of people are in restaurants where they're uh, like I, my stepson's in the, the fuel and uh, gas business. Um, and so they're in that niche. Our team, our niche is cash flow. If it cash flows, we will sell it. Uh, we have sold a guitar string manufacturing company. We have sold uh, some strange stuff that you never just think are, are out there that somebody would want. What we try to stay away from is, is sometimes we get referrals that, I think I got a referral one time for a barber shop that was $30,000. So it's more about the financials than it is the industry, because believe it or not, there's so much money out in the marketplace. Uh, and there, you, 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 I'd never judge. I used to think, would well, someone want to buy this? But I stopped thinking like that 10 years ago because there's always somebody out there. One of the dog grooming uh, businesses, we've sold like several, all of a sudden one month, we're like getting all this dog grooming business from all over the uh, Southeast, um, was from a, uh, a, a, a woman that had been in corporate America in California for 25 years. She used her 401k to get an SBA loan to purchase this dog grooming business. And the dog grooming business was almost about two blocks from the beach in Florida, uh, and the apart there was an apartment right there. So she's going to be living with the dogs, grooming the dogs, and she she bought it two years ago and it's so tickled pink. I'm like, how are we going to sell? What are we going to do with this? There's so many people out there, and I'm trying to think. So we've sold we sold cupcakes, we've sold all kinds of crazy things that you wouldn't know. So there's no one particular industry we stay away from. It's really it's, it's really the, the, the ones that are actually not generating enough cash. Uh, so if, if a deal's under $100,000, like if it's listed, we probably won't take it because the work is just, it, it tends, the work to, tends to be double for the team and there's just not enough money in it to advertise and market it. But, um, but yeah, great question. If it cash flows, we can sell it. And that's the other thing we do too. So we talked about, I talked earlier about the 20% success rate. My team has a 96% success rate. And um, I always joke with them. The only reason we're under a hundred percent is because I took on a friend's business that I probably shouldn't have. It's not like taking on a family business uh, uh, when you know you shouldn't. And, and I just couldn't get it sold for them. Um, but, but we have a 96% close rate because we do the valuation first. You know, we, we, we engage the client, we do the valuation, and then we pull comps out in the marketplace to show them, okay, this is the valuation, here's the comps out there, 
to kind of show you where we are. And by the way, this is what we know we can take it to market for you. And if the business owner decides, so we never talk about doing a listing until we get past that point. So when we get to that point, we show Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner. So here's, you know, your business is worth one and a half million dollars. Here's the comps and we justify it by here. And, and they'll go, well, I really wanted two and a half million. And we ask them what they, what, how do they determine that, blah, 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 we go through this stuff. And we go, well, we hope you get it. Or we tell them, listen, you know, we can't get you that right now, but here are some, here are some uh, affiliate partnerships, business coaches, or whatever you got to do if you want to grow your business. Because our job isn't to take every business to market. Our job is to take the right business for the client to make sure that client mm -hmm. is going to sell their business when it's at the peak time to sell. Everyone's heard of a bell curve that's ever been in a business class. Our job is not to list a business. Our job is to sell that business for the highest price in the marketplace and make sure that business owner can get what, he, what, what they're supposed to get out of it. So we probably have put, I probably have, I probably have anywhere from 20 to 30 businesses that we will look at listing two to three years down the road. And, and, and trust me, you wanna gain some credibility with clients, you tell them, listen, I'm not gonna list you right now. You got about two, two years off. We're gonna, we're gonna keep doing your valuation, updating your valuation each year. When you get to this point, then we're gonna take it to market. And then they get really excited and they go, well, you know, we're not used to you know, business brokers actually telling us that they are not gonna take it to market for us, but we're gonna take it to market for you at the right time. And by the way, it's a win-win because ultimately we get paid more two or three years down the road. So those are some of the credibility. A lot of our business, I, we have, Shark Team has done zero marketing and advertising in years. I mean, it's, it's all referral. This is outside of working with EXP agents. We have attorneys, CPAs. We have people from all over the U.S. that call us up all the time and I have a client ready to sell. And they know we're going to take care of them. We, they know we're going to make sure we, we take care of them. And if it's the right time to sell themselves, it's not the right time, then, then we tell them what they need to do to get to that point. That's great. Kate, you have a question? My question is food trucks. Is that a viable business? That's true. I got a great story about that, Kate. I got a great story about that. So, so to, in, in pandemic, coming out of pandemic, there was a, a, a financial advisor that sent me, said, hey, listen, this, this 26 year old kid, he, he was in the army for three years. He got out, him and his girlfriend bought a food truck. Uh, they're doing it for like eight months. They wanna see if they can, or like year, year, year two, just over a year. And you know, his father's thinking about doing something with him like down South. Uh, can you do a quick valuation, see what he can sell it for? And so he's only, you know, typically you want a business to be operating three years before you sell it, typically, okay? Sometimes you can do it quicker. So I do the valuation. I use the software to do the valuation. And it came to about $250,000. And, um, and, you know, this guy's 26 year old. He spent $12,000 on a, on, a, on, a, on a food truck and it's worth $250,000. And he's like, wow, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, you think you can market, you can get that sold for me? I said, I'll give you 300,000 cash for it. And he said, you? I said, yeah, I'll buy. I said, I need my wife to have a job. I said, I'll give you $300,000 cash for it. And he goes, why would you pay me more than what the value is? And I said, well, if a guy that's actually appraising your business, who also sells businesses, offers you more than what it's valued at currently, what's that tell you? He goes, I shouldn't sell. I said, no, you should not sell. And to the point on food trucks, the next year we did a new valuation. His business was worth 800,000. Uh, last year we just updated it. His business was worth 2.1 million. So let me tell you, food trucks are good and they're easy to sell too. If they're in the right marketplace, they're great. And I love telling that story because I wish I, he would have let me buy it. But, um, <laughs> That's awesome. So Gerard, Paul, what question do you have? Well, Gerard, when going back to the evaluation process right in the beginning, when you have to figure out what the business is worth. Um, so when you engage with the client, 
is there a fee to do the evaluation if they continue with you? Or what if you do the evaluation and they decide we don't like your evaluation and you have to stop the relationship? Uh, is there a charge for doing an appraisal or an evaluation of their business? Absolutely. So we make sure we wear two hats. So we do the evaluation separate of the listing. A lot of business brokers tie tied in, but they are not certified to do, typically they're not certified to do the valuation. We make sure we do that and we do a fee for that. And I really haven't had, I mean, sometimes every now and then somebody's disappointed, but really you got 32.5 million Main Street private businesses. So that's typically under five to 7 million in gross, under 500 employees. Out of that, 98% of them don't have a clue what the value of their business is. So usually when we come in and with the credentials, and then we pull the comps, they usually are uh, accepting of what, what we did. I've never had a client walk away and say, we, you know, I don't like your value because they don't, they don't know how to justify it. But yeah, we charge them. And I always, I, I love what you just asked. We charge, I never, my team never takes a retainer. So I always tell them, but when we show you the report, when we show you the comps, you still got to pay us if you don't like it. I always make a joke about that. We have done 271 valuations last year. Think about that number. That's a lot. So we did 271, knowing that anywhere from 15 to 20% of those will lead to listings and another 20 to 30% will lead to listings at some other time. And the others just needed to know what the value of their business is for insurance reasons, partnership reasons, or whatever they're doing. But, but great question. Yeah, we actually charge every now and then if we're doing, if you got a great client and you're like, listen, We've done a bunch of deals together. Can you give them a break on the, the valuation? Because typically, if I do an SBA type of valuation, it's $2,500. I reduce it down to EXP clients to $1,900. Um, or if I use my software, it's $750. And there's two differences. It depends on how much they gross a year on, on what we do. But if you're like, this is a great client, uh, can you give them a break on that? then what we'll do is we'll take it off the top of, of, of the commission. So when we do a referral agreement, I'll just put in the notes, you know, we didn't, we didn't charge a, a, an appraisal fee on this. We will take it off the commission, to make sure my team gets paid. Because I have a team, I have staff that do it. But great question, Paul, thank you. Dave? Thank you. Do you work with franchise owners? Absolutely. And it really depends on the franchise because some are real particular, but yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, in, in regards to franchise as well, when you do evaluation, do you ever get involved in recommending franchising in the future for that owner? We, uh, great question. So twice we've been involved in licensing agreements, which are similar to, but not as complicated to franchising. We have not been directly involved with the franchising of, um, uh, although we're working on right one right now, to be honest with you, with, uh, with, uh, with our team of uh, trying to do something on a, a patented uh, product. But yeah, those, those are open to discussion, absolutely. Are they harder to deal with? Yes. Of the corporate structure of them and what have you? Absolutely, Kathy, yes, yeah. they are. And typically we want to stay, we, typically we want to stay away from, so if someone's like, we get a lot of times people are trying to sell a pizza franchise or a uh, auto shop. It's going to be in your, typically it's going to be in your lower end unless they're multiple sites. So most of those businesses, and I'm just being generic general here, are anywhere from two, three, four hundred thousand dollars uh, So they're a lot of work. And then you got to deal with making sure the franchise or agrees with who's coming in there. It just throws extra steps on us, uh, but we deal with that. And we deal with uh, E2 visas. We do all the stuff across the board. Um, anything you think about, we've actually handled. So just curious, this is a completely side question, but around the franchises, in your experience in doing evaluations like you do, like do you find franchises are generally profitable or, or, I mean, are they just like barely, 
skirt and buy most of them, I guess, unless you're Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I mean, oh, are most of them just real, like, ridiculously tight margins? Yes. Yes. Very, yeah. yes. So I've seen it both ways. And, and typically the franchise will have a lot of their data uh, that actually helps us. So they already have a lot of data that we can use that the franchisee can get that helps us in the valuation as well. But typically their profit margins because they're paying such high fees in the franchise. And that's unlike, unlike Chick-fil-A, of course, love to have some of those. Mm -hmm. um, typically, uh, yeah, their margins are, are tight. Hey, Jared, I have a question for you. Have you ever evaluated boutique real estate brokerages? Uh, yes, matter of fact, we just did one last August uh, that we had met at the Florida Association of Realtors Convention. So, yes, we can actually analyze that. Actually, two, and then one here local. So, yes. Yeah, I'm sure Jeff or Eric or some of you guys that talk to these small boutique brokerages, they think they're worth tons of money and they're going to get big checks. And I wonder if the perspective is a little different when you start looking at what the value of what it's really worth and what it's worth to somebody else. And, and typically, if they don't have something attached to them, like rental property management and all that stuff, uh, the value is really not going to be there, right? Because it's really who that, the one we were dealing with, I mean, the, the broke, we were trying to help another broker get out of his sell his, uh, his, his, his brokerage, he had bought it using an SBA loan for almost a million and a half. I mean, he spent some money on it. And the second, you know, within a year, I mean, he just, I, I mean, he, he could barely make his payments because a lot of those agents that were closing the big volume deals left, you know, because they just didn't like the change in the ownership. So those are real, real, Real skeptical, but absorbing a boutique that like has has been in the middle of a community for a long time, usually there's some good opportunity there. I had a friend of mine buy Remax a long time ago, and you know that's what I said. You're really just buying. I mean, yeah, in that situation, you're buying the name, but you're really just buying the realtors. So you need to make doggone sure when you're doing those negotiations that you know your top realtors are plant, you know, are staying uh, because that's really what you're buying. Um, anybody else have a question? Jordan, I want to just ask just on a, from a practical standpoint. So you, that website, agentpayday.com, mm -hmm. that's going live next Monday. Yes. So like for anybody interested in this, we go to that website and like, is, are we going to see like, that's where we'll see like, here's the drip campaigns. Here's like, like there'll be a process on there for us to start taking advantage of, you know, getting this out to people. Is that, uh, am I Great thinking? Great question, that? Jeff. And thank, thank you for asking that. Yes, Absolutely. So there'll be stuff like what it, it'll explain what business brokerage is. You can get a little bit full of understanding on that, but it will have those scripts. It'll say specifically, you just you basically you'll be able to cut and paste, take those scripts, put your own branding on it. And basically it'll stay like we're partners. So we are all partners. We're all part of one big community. So we're your partners. So that's how we like to refer to this. So all the scripts will be there. We're going to make it where you can put them in a campaign. Uh, it should be very clear. And of course, it'll keep evolving. As we get feedback, we're going to want your feedback. So you would submit, you'll be the way it looks right, the way it's going to be built out right now, you would submit uh, you, the referral to us. You'll get an email that we got this, that we'll be contacting the clients. Uh, and then we'll be giving you periodic updates. So you're not just sitting in limbo. But these deals, and I'm, I'm really glad you just brought that up, Jeff. So these deals, so this deal that we closed where we paid out that $43,000 check, that started last October, okay? She just got paid in, in October. Because typically a business brokerage deal will take four to six months, typically. But sometimes because of, this happened to deal with the, the actual seller had issue, had finished his taxes and we had to jump through hoops and there was extensions and all of a sudden there was a hurricane. There's always something going on that we had to keep doing extension, but it got done. So during that time, luckily this agent, you know, we called her up too. She, she, she was never wondering because she just she knows us. But uh, two weeks before we said, by the way, we'd have a closing day. She's like, oh my God, you know? So, but we will do periodic updates with the agents uh, to make sure that you're not just left thinking, 
um, what's going on. There'll be an email, a specific email that you can send, hey, just checking on this and we'll be able to update. We, we're gonna try not to, we don't wanna get inundated with a thousand emails every day, but we're gonna have people oversee that. So you have a comfort level that if, when you partner with us and you walk through that process and you close that deal, you're gonna get paid at closing. You know the CDA is the way we do it. You close it, you get all that stuff. You'll know when the closing's happening and then get paid. But the scripts right. will be there. The marketing will be there uh, for the different social media platforms, right? So there's different things you're going to do for Facebook and LinkedIn than, you know, some of the other things. Maybe we'll do some funny stuff for TikTok. Uh, I can probably get my 17-year-old to help me with some funny stuff with that. I mean, there's just all kinds. And then if you have ideas, send them to us, you know? We want, because, you know, I, don't, I haven't been in the residential world in 18 years, and I was not good at it. So if you're like, hey, maybe you can do it this way, or maybe we can do it this way. We are all open to this. We want to make this big. There's going to be 12 million businesses that sell in three to five years. Think about that number. Baby boomers are retiring. Okay. Now think about this number. There's only 12,000 business brokers or people that say they're business brokers in the entire U.S. Think about how many realtors there are in the U.S. What? 1.9 million. 2.2 million. There's 100, there's 215,000 active agents in the state of Florida where I am. And in the state of Florida, there's a thousand business brokers. So out of 11 our state population, there's only a thousand of us. So there's so much business out there uh, that we want the boots on the ground. We want you on the ground. You guys are out in the community. You guys got huge databases of clients that have bought and sold houses and all kinds of stuff with you guys. So go out, I guarantee you, there's gonna be 20, 30% of them that are business owners. And then a lot of them are gonna be in that baby boomer mindset. So they're gonna be like, I wanna sell my business. But so some of you probably have heard of this, that like exit plan, like people planning for retirement, 75 to 80% of most people that are, do not have a plan or exit plan for retirement. And those are the business people. You know why? Because they don't know what the value of their business is or they don't know they can sell it. So I took, so I was at a chamber event three years ago and I was talking to a gentleman that owned an HVAC company. Now HVAC company, that industry, home service is hot, okay? And I'll put, we will put a list out on the Agent Payday website on the industries that are really hot, okay? So HVAC. So he's like, he's got five trucks, big piece of property. And he's like, you know, my, my sons, they don't want the business. And, he, and I said, what are you going to do with it? He goes, we're just going to shut it down. I, I, I can't do this anymore. I said, would you mind if I take a look at what your business is worth? And he said, sure, you can take a look. And I actually did that one for free because I was like a little shocked. And by the way, there's another statistic. I'm a statistic king, by the way, when it comes to business. 3%. Any business owner that sells or hands over their business to their children, 3% are successful. Think about that number, 3%. Because kids don't work as hard as the parents in, the, in their own business that they build. That being said, HVAC company, it was listed, we valued it at $1.5 million. And then the property was huge. I mean, it was, and I told him, listen, you're going to take your property. Now, my job wasn't to list that business, get him to list his property, so I can make a $3 million listing. You know, his property is about the same as his business. My job, I told him, I said, listen, you're gonna put your property in an LLC, have your lawyer put it in an LLC, in a different name. And then now you're gonna become a landlord. We sold his business for like one, three, five. He got that money. And then the new buyer became his tenant. That dude today loves me. I'll tell you that. Wow. He just sits back and collects a check. You know, so, I mean, those are the things that we do, um, that we, we do, you know, consultants, whatever you want to call it, that's our job. And, and we're pretty good at it. I love awesome. that. You know, one thing that's coming to mind the whole time you're talking, we talk about this a lot on our 
calls on Tuesdays is video, video, video. And so I love the idea of the partnership and the website that you guys are going to have and how we partner. But it's like, get on video, right, as a residential agent and just say, I'm so excited. I just, you know, I've just joined forces. I've just partnered with the Gillison and the Shark team, you know, in the commercial real estate space and the business brokerage space, you know, who my friends out here know somebody that, you know, owns a business that they're, they want that they, you know, were thinking about getting rid of or thinking about selling or worse, thinking about closing down because you're ready to retire. Like, reach out to me, let me connect, you know, let's let's help you get some money for your business potentially. Let's see what it's worth. Anyway, again, the whole time you're talking, I'm like, those are great video opportunities to generate more leads to yourself to ultimately generate more commission, you know, commissions back to yourself. So um, love that idea. But Brenda really had good. her her hand up for a while. But Brenda, hang on just one second. Real quick question that, that TJ had asked. Is the commission split with the Gillison and Shark team the same? Yes. Or Yeah. Okay. There you go, TJ. All right, Brenda Lee, um, what question you have? This is exciting. I'm really glad I jumped on this call just to let you know that right out the gate here. Um, quick question. I'm licensed, obviously, in Pensacola and Florida. I have connections all We're over neighbors. the country. We're neighbors. We're neighbors. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That being said, as far as the referral goes with where you're licensed as an agent, can we refer throughout the whole country, even if I'm not licensed in other states? Great question. Yes. Yes. You know, I've only sold one business in Destin in three years. And that was, that was a friend of mine. So we sell, we sell all over. So if you have a client, man, that's such a great question. If you got clients, think about all your clients. You got a client in Wyoming. If you got a client in Iowa, I talk to, I'm talking to somebody in Hawaii. We don't care where they are. They don't have to be just in your community, wherever they are, just make that connection. We can sell anywhere. Okay. We can sell anywhere. We're working on a deal in West Virginia. Think about that. That's one of those red states. Behind me, I have the portability map right up here. All we do is we use a, we find a licensed agent for the real property there. We got it all figured out. Okay. So it's we got it all figured out. EXP helps us figure all that out. So, and I know like the Gillison group, and I assume, you know, since y'all are kind of partnered together, I mean, they do things in or outside of the country. I mean, like resorts in the Dominican Republic, right? You know, so if you even happen to know people that have things outside of the country, um, I, they can likely handle even those. Um, those I believe Stephanie and the Gillison Global Team, Steph, they sold what a resort in, Domin in the Dominican Republic for $350 million? Some mm -hmm. crazy number. Yeah. You know, Imagine and then if that was your referral Mexico. fee off of that. That, no, you, pr you probably could probably back, won't probably be 20, from. probably would be 20 percent. <laughs> <laughs> probably wouldn't be that. I don't know. What, I don't know what she paid, but she paid somebody a lot of money. I mean, I'm going on vacation if that happens. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm taking a week off. Right? That's a yeah. vacate. That's that's buying a house right <laughs> yeah. there. So that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, Ka and I love your idea. I love your idea, Kathy, as far as like doing that video, you know what I mean? Like, and just getting the word out. I mean, I think about yeah. this, like the opportunity here, Jordan, again, this is all new to me. I mean, 21 yeah. years of doing this, this, I've never done this before. So yeah. I'm just, I'm sitting here taking notes. I'm thinking this through. I'm like, you know, like I got, I don't know, 3,200 connections on LinkedIn. I've got yeah. you know, 4,800 people on Facebook. I've got like, yeah. like just to get the word out and be consistent. Like, and then, and then all of our past clients and all these years of doing this, like, it's just and like, that, there's no way there's not people out there that I can exactly. send it to you, I think. Yeah. I mean, I just... <laughs> Jeff, I mean, just my brother-in-law is an HVAC company. And just when you mentioned that, I was like, I wouldn't even have thought of him. Like, he's not looking quite yet to retire, but I wouldn't even have thought of him. So it's everybody from the small mom and pop companies that are successful to, you know, the $350 million, you know, resorts um, and what, everything in between. And you never know, like the, the realty agent that sent the $22 million, he had no clue that that business was worth $22 million. Yeah. He had no idea. So yeah. it's these those deals are around you. And it's all, I always say this, it's the R word. Because everyone that I train, including my own team, they always ask, well, how do we find someone that wants to sell their business? It's relationship, your yeah. sphere of influence. It truly is. I've just nailed it. I mean, in, in pre-EXP, our team was working with realtors. We went to the Florida Association of Realtors. We were the only, 
business brokers don't typically work play nice with each other, right. let alone with other with realtors because they think, what do they know? We love real we love the realty agents because they're boots on the ground. We've got eighty eight thousand of them within EXP, and then another two million outside of EXP. We love them. They're the ones in the community. They're the ones going to all the functions. They spend 60, 78 hours doing all that stuff. When we don't. And it's like, make sure you partner with them so they can bring these business. But those scripts, Kathy, doing the videos that you're talking about, that's amazing. We will put some scripts out there for that too. So I, I, you've been coming up some two weeks. You've been hitting me. You, you need to think about this. I love it every time I get a text from you because you, mm -hmm. you're just nailing it. And uh, and I appreciate all the thoughts that you you got going on with, with with what we're trying to do here. Yeah, I love it, Michael. You keep are you raising your hand there? You, yes, yes, I, I am. Hand I, going up. I, I'm you better have my, an easy question for you, Mike, since you're on my team. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Gerard's team, and I want to say one thing. When I've been talking to EXP agents, and right behind me on my screen, it says our team sells business in all 50 states. So you know that realtors create teams. And Jeff here has created a team called the Freedom Team. And that's what we are. We are a team. So when you have a prospect that asks you, can you help me sell my business in New York and you're in California, you'll say, yes, you have a specialist who specializes in business sales. And that's us that it could accommodate them and sell that business in New York. And when we sell it, that realtor in California gets a referral check and that client comes back to them and says, thank you for helping me sell my business. I've got $2 million in a bank account. Can you help me buy my investment property? But the key there is you have to think about, we talk about getting out to your clients, is that statement behind me, instead of putting our team sells business in all 50 states, you put up there, Freedom Team sells business in all 50 states. So when your client sees that, they're going to ask you that question. What do you mean by that? I said, well, my team member who specializes in business sales can answer all your business questions and help you sell that business. And so you don't have to do any of the work. It just being advertised, that statement out there will attract investors. And you and I know investors do many things. And business owners are investors. They buy residential. That's why Gerard was saying, you're the boots on the ground because you talk to more business owners than we will ever will talk to. And that's why we're trying to get you guys to realize that majority of the folks you talk to are business owners. And so you're missing that opportunity to get that free money. As a matter of fact, in that convention that Gerard was talking about, one realtor told me, this is pillow money. I go, what is pillow money? She goes, you sleep on it and get paid. I was like, exactly that. This payday or paycheck is pillow money. And that's what we want you to have is a lot of pillow money. Thank yeah. you. That's so good. Great, Thank Mike. you. Yeah, I love the idea of Freedom T sales in all 50 states. I just like the idea of saying, hey, I'm partnered with, you know, a I'm partnered with the Gillison and the Shark team and just act like we're all business partners, right? And just get the word out there. Who do you know? That type of thing that um, that's looking to sell. Dave, you have another question? Yeah, just briefly, do you handle professional practices like medical practices, dental practices? And also, do you want us to bring you buyers who are looking for business to buy? Great question. So on the dental and uh, medical practices, absolutely. So we have sold plenty of, I've sold two dental practices. Uh, th those are, th I, I love doing the valuations on those. Um, and I, I've sold plenty of medical practices. Matter of fact, one time we did a valuation on one. When I was three years into the business, I actually bought into uh, with with the, with a client into an open MRI facility. Uh, so we we love that space, and that space is hot right now. So we do weight loss, anything you can think of in the medical space. Um, typically, uh, two to three months we can close that deal. Uh, it's 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 one of the hotter markets right now. On the buyer side, there's so many buyers out there. We try not to take on too many buyers because we, I mean, I've still got a buyer, a very good friend of mine that qualified for a three, $4 million business. And it's just, it, it's, it's when you're dealing with other business brokers, a lot of brokers won't work with you. They don't like co-brokering. That's the other reason we charge 10%. We will co-broker. So we, our job is not to take the entire commission. 
on the buying and selling side. Our job is to sell that business for the highest price on the market as fast as we can. So if I have a business broker calling us up on one of our listings, do you work with other brokers? Absolutely. You bring the deal first, we're going to close it with you. Even if it costs us money, it's not costing us money. It's the client's money. You got to get them sold. So we try to stay away from too many buyers. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll do an engagement agreement with the buyers, you know, just to make sure they're not, um, they're not calling on 10, 10 or 15 different brokers looking because everything's online. There's, there's like 15 different platforms that we market on, including our own investor groups that we have. But great question. So I did have one question. I got burned on this a long time ago. Um, and so hopefully to prevent anybody else from ever getting burned. Um, how I saw that the average time to sell businesses, but when somebody's doing a referral agreement with you, how long should that be in place? So I had one for a year, it took more than a year and the dude wouldn't pay me my referral fee. And so that was my bad that I did update that um, referral fee. That was a hard lesson learned. I mean, it was like, I mean, it's a $2 million business though in another state. Um, and I didn't get a referral fee off of that, which, you know, he would, which that's a whole nother conversation, but I don't want that to happen to somebody else. So, you know, how long do, how long do you recommend people get referral agreement and whose job is it? I mean, is it, I guess, again, I take responsibility for that, that I didn't stay on top of renewing the referral agreement yeah. I had given them, but. So, great question, Kathy. If we list the business that you sent us, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna get paid with took a year, two years, or three years. So I'll make sure the refer. If we list the business, that is as far as that's your client. I don't care if it. And I've never had a business take three years, by the way. So yeah. we, <laughs> we suck if we take three years out of business. We didn't do something right. So anyway, so but typically, like I just said, it would be over a year a lot of times. And I know those refer agreements usually say that. On a buyer side, this is the other thing. We got a buyer, and it takes two. I mean. You know, that's where another thing that gets a little sticky because we could have a buyer that maybe two or three years waits down the road. And how long do we really want, how much energy and time and, 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 and hours are we dealing with that buyer? We have to really look at that. Uh, that might be stuck on that year mark because you know how buyers are. That's again, why I don't really, we, not, we prefer not having the buyer close. We want you guys to focus on the listing side because that way we control the marketing, we control the listing, and then we can all get paid pretty quick um, because we- Yeah, there was a listing. It was a listing he got. So oh, then got, you would have got paid no matter- I thought, that, that's our, I that, that's thought like that was bad business. You know, obviously that, that I mean, that was before EXP, but, before the, you know, before our partnership but, with commercial and all of that. So let me give you an example how how our team works. So- Mike Hoover here, he's the one that got the listing on the sports bar that we paid the 43,000. So we did the business listing in October. It was just the business. That was 1.2 million, okay? We did the, in four months later, four months late, February, February. And by the way, and Mike was with my other brokerage. He wasn't with EXP. So we did a referral agreement with my other brokerage with that, with that realtor, you saw the picture. Four months later, Mike's with EXP. The business owner, the sports bar owner, wants to sell his property. Property's worth 2.6 million. What do you think we paid the referral on? Just the business? No, we gave her referral on everything. She got that 43, and she was shocked. Two different brokerages. That could have been justified. Said, hey, you know, we, you gave us the business, but the way we do things, if you send us that client and we do the whole thing, you're still getting paid on that. That's how we work. And she was shocked. She didn't even know the, 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 the real property was listed. So when we called her about the $43,000 check, she was, how did it get this much? And we told her and she, she thanked us. So yeah. that's, that's, that's a real life example of how we work. That's Beautiful. awesome. That's awesome. Shelby, did you, you had a, you had your hand up. Did you have a question? I took, you took your hand down. Are you, did your question get answered? Yeah, I think my question got answered. I was going to ask if you're on just, you know, the general sites like biz by sell and stuff like that, or if it's just private site, but you said you go to like 15 different sites. Um, and then I was also going to ask if you could repeat the name of your app that you said is connected with QuickBooks. And is that a suitable valuation for a potential seller? Or should they also then go and do the actual um, estimation with you? Yeah, typically the seller 
probably wants to have someone, whether it's us or somebody, do the actual valuation because then they can pull comps. Uh, Biz Buy Sell is probably one of the major platforms for specific businesses. Um, I will tell you in the future, we are building a site to compete with them because I can't stand CoStar uh, and the site's archaic. Uh, but yeah, Biz Buy Sell, and then there's a bunch of, I mean, there's a ton of platforms. Depends on what the industry is, whether it's e commerce uh, or, or all different kinds, you go to different sites. And then, of course, you use your all your investor groups that you're you're connected to that you know a bunch of buyers go to. But uh, yeah, great question. That's cool. So um, Jeff, do you, so I think we're at the end of the hour. But um, Gerard, thank you so much for for coming on and sharing and educating. And I mean, it's exciting for I would hope for all of us to just see how we can generate more income you know for ourselves and um partner and i think jeff to your point that you said you know 21 years in the business and haven't heard it it's because the platform that exp is and it really to me speaks volumes about the collaboration that we always always talk about of how we collaborate together as realtors and you know now not only is it that we do that and do it well in the residential space now we're doing that well in the commercial space, you know, and it can mean a lot more money for, you know, all of us um, in, you know, in the residential world. So um, I appreciate you, Gerard, and uh, excited what, what about everything together. And Jeff, do you, oh, good deal. Jeff, do you want to talk about Sean Murphy tomorrow? Hang, and, hang tight on that. Just a second. Um, just to wrap this up, Gerard, do you mind? Um, Joseph was asking, several people are asking as far as just contact information. I know we've got your website, which will be live on Monday. Oh, perfect. Um, but do you mind giving out your contact information, people, if they want to have Absolutely. questions and want to call here's, you guys here's, directly? Here's my, oh, I'm misspelling my name. Here's my uh, email. You can always hit me up on Workplace, too. Anything, okay. hit me up, ask me any questions. Um, we're excited for Agent Payday to go live. Thank you for your time. We want to partner with all of you. And you will see, as we close deals, you will see those checks. That's the other thing's going to be on that site. You will see real people, some of your friends, with those checks. So we want, I love the big checks. And by the way, we do have a shark dance that you'll be doing too when we close deals. <laughs> Just letting you know that. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's you, Kathy. I Stephanie, want to do got me. Stephanie got me doing a karaoke in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in Gallenberg. I'm like, I do not sing. <laughs> and I certainly did not drink enough for that. But anyway. <laughs> I, I, I can't promise any dances, but uh, Sean, I mean, Jeff, do you want to talk about Sean Murphy tomorrow as we yeah. wrap up? And interview yeah, there? we'll wrap it up here, guys. Just a couple quick things. The recording of this, several people asked him. The recording, again, it will be up uh, probably within the next hour. Um, you can find it on our workplace group, Freedom Team in Workplace. Um, within the next you know day or so, you'll see it also up on uh, freedomteamsupport.com if you're not part of EXP, um, and we can certainly send you the recording as well. So just get back to the person who ever invited you on here, and we can uh, certainly get that recording too if you need it. So, um, and again, if you're watching the recording, Gerard, uh, his email, Gerard, um, G-E-R-A-R-D, at sharkteam.com. And then you got Mike Hoover. Mike, thanks for being on here. It's good to see yeah. you. Mike at sharkteamflorida.com. So there's ways to reach out to those guys um, to get more specific questions answered. But agentpayday.com coming on monday the 20th thank you i thank excited. you jeff thank you kathy appreciate you paul excited for that so, on, on. yep so guys tomorrow morning uh, what time is it kathy is it is, i think I it's forget. at 11 30 um I sean think murphy 11 it's kim on here hang on a minute we should have <laughs> I should, this i should have looked before you. oh my heavens I know. so we're doing an interview tomorrow guys um sean murphy he's vice president of growth at exp and uh eric golden is going to be doing an interview with him um tomorrow morning on this same zoom 10, 10 o'clock central time 10 a.m central so same time 11 a.m eastern uh 8 a.m pacific um, you want to definitely check that out. Um, Sean Murphy, Vice President of Growth with EXP. We're going to be, be doing a full interview with him uh, as well. So there'll be some great stuff there as far as just, you know, what's happening at EXP and mm -hmm. where we're going as a company, just different things there. So um, that'll be awesome as well. So we'll be doing that in the morning. As always, if you have any questions for Kathy, myself, Tim, Eric, Stephanie, any of us, Sean, we're all here to help you always uh, just reach out to us. Um, you can reach, reach us through Workplace Chat. Uh, or if you have our numbers, you know, certainly contact us directly. We're just available to help 
uh, with your production, with attraction, with anything you need real estate wise, uh, EXP wise, we're, we're here to help. So well, appreciate you guys me, being on here. Let okay. me add one last thing. Next yes. Tuesday, same time, same place. We're having a great training on the basics of YouTube. So, you yeah. know, again, we're talking about videos all the time. It's really the way that realtors, we need to all get comfortable being in front of cameras. I mean, none of us love it. So next week, we're, we've are we got somebody that's going to be on talking about the, uh, about the basics of getting a YouTube channel going and started. So come back next week, same time, same place. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, Gerard, thank you, so thank you so much. Thanks have a good day. Thanks so much, Gerard. Bye-bye. Thanks.